Now, we know when players are in the same division, they play each other at least two times a year, in some cases three, like last year with the Ravens and the Bengals. Uh, and when you play somebody so many times, a lot of times you have a mutual respect for that person. You're like, hey, look, I'm trying to beat you, but I got respect and I got love for your game. And I got respect and I got love for you personally as well. But... A lot of times, and we can find this in life too, when we just see somebody so much, when we deal with somebody so often, sometimes they can get a little annoying. And sometimes that respect that you got for somebody, it can go out the window. And, and that's exactly what it seems like it's coming to between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. If we go back to the offseason, Odell Beckham Jr., he got into it with Tyler Boyd and Odell Beckham Jr. was talking about how he's a Super Bowl champion and whatnot. And Tyler Boyd, he talked his trash, and Odell Beckham Jr. told him, Coulda, woulda, shoulda. And because Tyler Boyd was basing stuff off of what could have happened and what may have happened and what he thinks should have happened. But Odell Beckham Jr. basically told him, No, 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 that's not what actually happened. We can go back to last year. Uh, the Bengals scored a touchdown, and Roquan Smith gave a little bump. To Jamar Chase And the, the two sides have been going back and forth for years We can go back two years ago When Joe Burrow put up 500 yards 500 of them Against the backup Ravens defense And there was a lot of chirping Especially from the Bengals side about that game But now we come to this year And of course that game the other day um, In that game Joe Burrow suffered a season ending injury Which uh, he was probably dealing with an injury a little before the game But it, the game just made it 20 times worse And that's unfortunate for Joe Burrow And that sucks um, But all the talking media heads have been Putting their own narratives on what happened And why it happened and the outcome of the game and what now But it's not just the media heads that have been doing that. Uh, yesterday, from Undisputed, Skip Bayless, uh, he tagged, he, he did a quote tweet for Undisputed uh, where he said the Ravens looked like a Super Bowl team last night. And that was, of course, about the Ravens and Bengals game on Thursday Night Football. Uh, and Skip Bayless then said, Lamar Jackson now has weapons he never had before. He's a flat-out stud. Odell is looking like Odell. Now, First part of that statement is true. Lamar does have weapons like he never had before because he's always had the quantity, but now the quality of the weapons has raised up a lot. Now, about Odell looking like Odell, uh, Odell ain't never going to be the same Odell that he was before. We, we know that, and then we need to face that. If, if, you, do, if you think Odell's going to be the same Odell that he ever was before, like in New York, no, he's not. He, he's, he's older. He's not as fast as he used to be, but he's showing that, hey, he could still play. Uh, but anyway, under that, Jermaine Pratt, who has been known to talk his trash about the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and he actually, he talked trash about, it was a Ravens game back a couple years ago, um, where he talked trash ahead of the game, and J.K. Dobbins gave him the stiff arm of a lifetime on his way to like a 60-something yard touchdown run. It was the last game of the season. Jermaine Pratt was running his mouth before the game, and then boom, he got stiffed arm into the next season. And then, I think it was the, the, the Bengals and the Chiefs AFC Championship game. Jermaine Pratt running his mouth. So Jermaine Pratt is used to running his mouth. That's his thing. So, hey, do your thing. Uh, at least he's consistent. But he was running his mouth after the AFC Championship game because he, he was down in his own teammate. Now, you do want to hold your guys accountable. I get that. But... In my opinion, I think it's a certain way to do it. But it's just the heat of the moment. You just you lost the game heading into the Super Bowl. So, yeah, of course you're going to be heated. Of course you're going to be upset at somebody. But that's still your teammate. But anyway, Jermaine Pratt, he replied to Skip Bayless again. Skip Bayless said, Lamar Jackson now has weapons he never had before. He's a flat-out stud. Odell is looking like Odell. And Jermaine Pratt, he saw that, and he said, yeah, only look good because nine got hurt. Of course, nine, he, the nine he's referring to is Joe Burrow. So he's saying, Lamar, only look good. Because nine got hurt. So, uh, Patrick Queen, who uh, is earning his paycheck both on and off the field. Because uh, Patrick Queen, he's been breaking it, especially these past couple of weeks. Now, the Browns, they beat the Ravens last week. And Kenyon Drake. <laughs> Kenyon Drake, who... Not on the active Browns roster, on the practice squad, did not get called up for the game, did not get a single carry, did not have any participation in this Browns-Ravens game whatsoever. While the Browns did win, Kenyon Drake was not a participant. And Kenyon Drake said, walk in your trap, take over your trap. 
And Patrick Queen had some nice words to say about that. And then and Ken, Ken and Drake, he took it. And he took it in a good way. Cause he, he he laughed about it. He did say, "Oh, that's funny." So it, it wasn't no harm, no foul. It's all good and all love. But anyway, uh, when Jermaine Pratt said, "Yeah, only look good because nine Joe Burrow got hurt," in reference to the Ravens, Patrick Queen made a good point. He said, "Y'all still got cooked on defense." Oof. So it looked like Patrick Queen doing some cooking of his own. Because that, that is true. Uh, while the starting quarterback, he was out. And that makes a big difference. And that can't take the, the, the heart out of a team. So I get that. But their defense, they still got to play. They, they still got to play, too. Joe Burrow don't play linebacker. He don't play corner. He don't play safety. He don't play defensive line. He's not a pass rusher. He's a quarterback. So he plays on the offensive side of the ball. But anyway, uh, Jermaine Pratt said, yeah, you were happy when nine, Joe Burrow, went down. They were attacking you. Good stuff. That's a clean version, by the way. And Patrick Queen said, ha, two catches is attacking? I'll never be happy that my boy went down because, you know, of course, him and Joe Burrow, they went to LSU together. Uh, he said, let me call 42 for you. 42 is Pancake Pat Pat record. Let me call 42 for you so he can take you to the sideline, to the bench again where you belong. So he, he didn't say he could, he could take you to the bench where you belong. He said, so he can take you to the bench again. Where you belong so. <laughs> so Patrick Queen let it be known man Like look Pratt man This this is not your fight This this is not your fight at all And then of course uh, Pat Ricard he, he, he got involved He just he put a gift of himself Warming up Getting ready So I'm, I'm loving the trash talk I'm loving the back and forth between both teams uh, Cause it's, it's fun it, it, It's fun to see a little friendly competition Or what, or maybe not so friendly competition But it does really make it seem uh, Like these players they There's no love loss uh, For each other Now um, will these two See each other again um, they, they lost their starting quarterback For the rest of the year So I, I doubt it You never know But I, I, I doubt it it's, it's not looking good For the Bengals right now Now somebody who did lose Their starting quarterback For the rest of the year uh, Is the Browns um, And the Steelers They got their starting quarterback But they also got a favorable schedule So the, the game today Between the Steelers and the Browns Is, is, is very big Because uh, Steelers Still a schedule For the rest of the year Minus the Ravens game it, It's looking sweet man It is looking really Really, really sweet. If you take a look at it, you're gonna be like, "Oh my goodness, these dudes may go on a little run." Of course, I, I do think they're gonna lose a game here and there, but they may go on a run, man. Because the teams that they, oh yeah, they favorable schedule. But today, um, this game between the Steelers and the Browns, we are hoping for a tie. We we are hoping for a tie, hoping that both teams, neither team wins, but neither team loses. So hey, look at that sportsmanship. But we hope that neither team wins. Um, so they can tie and they can both remain two games behind the Baltimore Ravens uh, in the AFC North. Now, speaking of the AFC overall, uh, the Chiefs and Eagles, they play on Monday Night Football. So fly Eagles, fly baby, because if the Eagles win, then that will put the Baltimore Ravens as the current number one seed uh, after this week. So that would be nice. Now, of course, the Baltimore Ravens will still need to maintain that. They will still need to take care of their own business, but... If the Eagles win, that will put the Baltimore Ravens in the driver's seat. And you know, something about the Baltimore Ravens, this is a position that they've been in many times before. Where all you got to do is, especially over the past couple of years, all you got to do is take care of your own business. If you take care of your own business, you'll be straight. You'll be fine. So if Eagles can get that done on Monday night football against the Chiefs, we will forever be grateful. Well, maybe not forever, especially if we see them in the Super Bowl. But anyway... We will be grateful to the Eagles, but even more so grateful to the Baltimore Ravens for taking care of their business for the most part up to this point. Yeah, they have had some hiccups for sure, uh, but we're glad that they've had a lot less hiccups uh, than they could have had. And those hiccups haven't resulted in them losing more games than they won. 